welcome back to Life After the Cover Save, episode 335. Actual recording is higher quality. That's right. Yes. That's what it and I hope here. so, because it's it's not looking great on my end. Uh, yeah. Life After the Cover Save, man. You know? Because sometimes you make that cover save. Sometimes you don't make that cover save. And actually, a cover save doesn't mean what it used to mean. You know what I mean? Mm-mm. Cover save. I'm glad we I'm glad we never went with the full pin. Yeah. Because that's even more, more meaningless. Mm-hmm. The full penetration. Life yeah. after. It'd be very different, yeah. <laughs> we, we have so a what, different what's your reaction when I shoot you? Are you going to go to ground? Life after, go into ground. Yeah, well, I mean, unless we're Necromunda, I'm a Necromunda guy now. You have to go to ground no matter what. Got to make you gotta, you're pinned. Got to take that bottle check. Yeah. Bottle, bro. <laughs> well, <laughs> well, I never really had a problem with bottle. Checks, I don't understand really. why it's called a bottle check. Are they throwing uh, in bottles? England? Like it's it's not it's like a bottle chuck. <laughs> no, um, in England. Like last year when Arsenal, the past two years when Arsenal didn't win the championships, even though they had uh, a lead, um, they would say, uh, oh, they bottled it. They bottled the lead. So bottling basically means like, uh, yeah, you blew it. You blew it. You fumbled it. You bottled it. I also thought it had something to do with maybe being in your bottom too. But but yeah, bottling something is, is, is fumbling and messing it up. In your bottom, yeah, like John Maybe. Bottom, no, John Bon John John Bon Jovi. You're half so a bottle there. check would be like they're whoa, living in this living chair. In so, like a bottle check is to see if they're <laughs> if they're going to mess it up and run away. I I assume hmm. that's just you know. Hey guys, why don't you tune in, you English listeners? Tell us what the bottle's all about. Hey, I want you pop on over. Tell us how, how to bottle a chick. Yeah, while you leave a review. So, in this episode of Life After the Cover Save, we are going to be talking about the many, many games that we have played lately. We've played a lot of games. Yes. Yeah. Dice has been thrown. Travis has played so many. When was the last game that we talked about? What was it? Carl's. Carl's. We went to Carl's. C- Carl's. Carl's close friends bash. Yeah. There's a lot of games since Carl's house. Yeah. And then, if there's time, there's a new segment <laughs> that we can introduce. If there's time. If I'm not, excited. If not, then he'll have to wait. A new segment. I don't want to promise it. Yet, under deliver and over promise, you pre promised, which works. Yeah, I pre promise. Pre promise can still get I you pregnant. That there could be. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, pre promises are actually usually like stronger, you know, they're more powerful promises. They're more potent. Potent, yeah, that's, that's that's the one. Parts per million go up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's funny. That's a good good gag there. But before we get into our games played, I would like to talk about our Patreon. Oh. Ooh. Do, do, do you guys mind? No. Yeah, we have a Patreon. Go ahead. May I? Really May dig I? in there. Okay, so for those of you who are unaware, we have a patron. A Patreon page. And we have just two tiers. It's very simple. We got the $3 tier, which gives you the video. Because this is a this is turning into a video podcast. Slowly but surely. In a lot of ways. Yes. $3. That's a dollar for me, a dollar for Ed, and a dollar for Travis. However, we release twice a month. So that means... 50 cents. It's 50 cents. Yeah, that's it. And you get to see, because there's a lot of things that you're going to see when you watch 
life after the recovery safe. Yeah, you 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 might want to know what drink Travis is drinking. Only the three dollar patrons oh, will know what drink yeah. he's drinking. I gotta I gotta put those in the fridge. I got I got I got about seven of those in a in a. Oh, <laughs> oh no! Whoa. Don't do that, Travis. Oh my god! Okay, let's talk about the six dollar tier. While Travis What's in the is six dollar tier? His physical <sighs> gags. <laughs> The six dollar tier gives you the video, right? But you get the extended episode because life after life after the cover save, that's where you know we take it down a notch, or maybe we take it up. Well, what I think there's one thing we're going to talk about in this life after life after. Oh yeah, I'm excited about we're going to do a character study about somebody. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, you did some purchases from. So yeah, I I made some purchases online, and the guy was close enough in Southern California, I think the Burbank area, close enough to me that I made a a trip to save on shipping for me and for him, and uh, it was an interesting it was an interesting um, social interaction. Like I wasn't so, even invited to this. I don't know when this happened. I would have went with you. I'll explain. You better. It's gonna. You better. I'm gonna tell all. I will tell all. Okay. It's a tell all <sighs> in life after life. I after can't wait for that. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so that's 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 the the patron tears. But there is a patron person who just upgraded his account from the three dollar to the six. Oh, what a great time Ooh. to do that because. This life after and this episode is going to be so good. I know. It's going to be so worth it, I think. Um, and his name is Skirt. Oh, skirt. Skirt. Yeah. Transformer Skirt. You know what? It's wild. All of our patrons are really good painters. Yeah. They really are. And actually, being a patron makes you a better painter. I think that's what it is. I think I that I, really helps. I guess I better... Become a patron to my own show. <laughs> Listen, it couldn't I mean, hurt. You want your game to step <laughs> yeah. up. I think you now, should. any angle possible. Skirt, I think, did some of my favorite artwork for 20 Sided Rounds. Yes, sir. Oh, oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. What a One show. One that we actually even turned into, <laughs> turned into a t-shirt. I love that shirt. Yeah. Who... In, in a, <laughs> Anybody buy that shirt? I did. And I sent him one. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so um, he became a, a $6 member. And he also won because I don't know. Uh, I've, I've mentioned this a few times. When we do those breakdowns, yeah. when I buy make a big purchase. Yeah, with the hobby bust the cost, or hobby yeah, bargain. Bargain or bust. When I do that. What I do is I put in the patron feed, this is what I bought. And if whoever, you guys can comment below one time, and you can list how much you think I paid for it. And whoever's closest gets something, not the whole thing. That'd be awesome, but I, I want to keep it. It's a prize. Thing. They get to pick something. It's a prize. You get a prize yeah. for the so, skill that you did in guessing. It's not a lot. They the, they're, they're playing the game. We just want to be clear, fun. legally speaking, it is not a lottery. You have to no, use no, no. some this sort is... of skill in guessing the right price. It's and a it's skill, a prize that you receive. Yes. Yeah. No, you're so, you're using you're using your noggin on this. Of course. Of course. Um, and he got c- close to what I spent on those battle wagons. So I ha- I'm gonna end up sending him a battle wagon. Oh <laughs> couldn't go to a better guy. He's 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 getting a whole battle wagon. Yes, a whole battle wagon. I mean, it's which are like a hundred and twenty-five dollars, right? I know, dude. <laughs> but you know, you saw the pictures. It wasn't like it's not a dude, pristine battle a battle wagon, but it's still yeah. a battle wagon. But it has a death roller, eighty bucks. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a good start. And then, yeah. last thing. So our buddy, our buddy Shap, he won the. Uh, I can't, the rocket guys. I don't remember their names. I can't. I'm really bad. Storm boys. Storm boys. Storm boys. Jap. So I, yeah. The Jap, Jap from Amsterdam. Yes. Who's the gonna Jap give me a tattoo them. when I show up to Amsterdam? Amsterdam. 
Yes. Amsterdam. So uh, I was going over trying to send him some stuff, and we were talking, and he said eventually during our conversation, he's like, you know what? It's cool. You don't have to send anything over here, but I want to send you guys something. So he sent us a package, and here's the package oh, right here I want to show we you. We got a prize? We got a prize. Well, hold on. I, and I haven't this. read this. Yeah. I haven't read this letter yet because I was waiting for you guys to come on. This is a visual gag you, here, folks. If you're not you on the Patreon. You're not. But I'm going to show you what we got here, and I'm going to explain what these are. Okay. These are dice. Okay. Dice. And, and on the six, uh-huh. it's like a, a, a steaming pile of turd. Mm. It's a turd. With steam yeah, lines yeah. on it. Can you see oh, that? Oh, nice. Yes. Vapor, you know. So we got a, We each got a bag. And then there's, I don't know if these are, maybe he'll say in the letter. It's LSD. These are like iron on. Um, it might be acid. Or patches, like fake tattoos. Okay, yeah, 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 yeah. That's what it is. <laughs> yeah. Fake tattoos. I mean, I guess you could put it on your tongue and find out. <laughs> but, I, but I think they're like fake tattoos. There's like. Uh, Wait, oh. Uh, Oh, hold on, Q, Q yeah, hold that up again. You, were you really wanting to see? Uh huh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. There's dice. Oh, right? okay. Yellow dice, and I think these are like those. You know, when you're a uh-huh. kid, you pick up fake tattoos. Yeah. tattoos. But again, oh, oh, these just look like they're maybe laminated. So there's like a battle sock. Oh, these are fantastic. There's a, gone to ground maybe these are just objective things you know oh, yeah. when you get stuck with a night spinner and your foot stuck in the, in yeah, the webs. yeah so let's let's let me read this letter okay if you're not listening at home um benjamin franklin is really taking an interest to this what's happening i'm gonna fly a kite uh, later yeah all right so here it is I, i'm gonna read it right now hopefully it's cool if, I, it if it's Dutch? not cool, so, if it's nuts, whatever if it's you crazy, do, please don't read this in there. On there, I know. Uh, I'll just there'll just be a long bleeped out thing. So okay, all right. Hi Ed, Blake, and Travis. Thanks for your podcast. Yours truly, Jeff. That was really special. All right. You bring stupid smiles to my face every time I listen to you. Good. Thanks for making the world a better place. Oh. Here are or here's are some cheap ass no budget tokens that I made to help you in your 40k games. Like it. So Blake, yeah. now you have to play 40k. Uh-huh. Um there's the plunging fire token. The one rule everybody forgets, even see, seasoned veterans and competitive gamers, they forget the plunge. Yeah, fire. I forget that too. If you're on, if you're on a higher uh, <laughs> level of a of a uh, of a ruin, isn't it plus like minus one to your AP on the weapon or something like that? I think that's what it is. Uh, yeah, wild. There's a battle sock token. So the battle shock. Battle, it's a battle sock. sock. I could use that. Sticky objectives. Oh, I like that. Shopping bag action tokens. Yeah, that's a big one. Yeah. That's that was part of the that yeah. They actually had that in second edition and they yeah. brought it back. And the action is a Dutch supermarket chain in 10 European countries. Oh. Okay. And the gone to ground token. And last but not least, the shitty dice. Yeah. That he's had custom made. So you can always blame your dice, whatever the result. Huh. Always blame your dice. I hope you can put these to good use. I know I will. Game on. Keep on trucking. Have fun. Shap. Thank you. Look good guy. And yeah, there's three bags. It's very cool. Shap. I'm going to use them. No. Oh, the- Maybe Blake can use them in Necromunda or Old World. Those are actually going to be super useful. I was just uh, um, in a recent game. I was like, ah, I don't have, really have anything to mark uh, Battle Shock on my units. And now I go. do. Yeah. Battle Shock. Yeah. Yeah. It's important. Plunge, plunging fire, you know? Yeah. Plunging Is fire. that really a rule? That if you're higher up? It's, you... it's in the ruins. Um, huh. Does that make you want to play more now? 
No. Oh, okay. I'd ask. I'm just dis- I'm disgusted with the 40k line <laughs> because this AOS spearhead is so much better than the uh, combat patrol. Oh, geez. So you say? How many games have you played? None. Okay. Not confirmed yet. You have to well, actually play it before you give me a truth for a review. Well, I, you know what? I'm. It's not true because I'm willing to think that the the moon is very cold. In mm-hmm. fact, I'll die if I'm on the moon. Now no, I can't won't. prove that unless I go there. What are you talking about? People have been to the moon. I haven't died, and they came back. I haven't. They didn't die. They didn't freeze. <laughs> Tom Hanks almost if you, did. If you leave, if yeah, if you leave, take off that suit, you're gonna die on the moon. Maybe we don't know. We never saw it happen. You know what? You're, you're I, good point. I need to see it happen. Yeah, I need to see I it need happen. somebody to take off their suit when they're on the moon. Oh, don't you remember um, when Superman? 2? Yeah, Superman two. No, they, they, they pulled no, no, no. total recall. They pulled the uh, the flag off the uh, off the uniform and yeah, Houston. Where is this? Houston? Who is this Houston? Yeah. What if, like, I you know? What about when? Shocked. Yeah, you know, you've seen what happens when when Arnold was on Mars. Kneel before Arnold me, Forsley Blake. Was on Mars and he smashed his his helmet. Yeah, and you saw what happened to his eyeballs. Uh, 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 it's the same thing. No atmosphere. Uh, 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 the moon. The moon is is uh, a different gravity than on yeah. Mars. It's different. about atmosphere. I don't know. I think the moon has pretty chill atmosphere. I played dude. atmosphere. It yeah. I've yeah. played it. We've played atmosphere. <laughs> we played atmosphere. You understand <laughs> this. Yeah. But nothing happened to my eyes. Yes, my gatekeeper. <laughs> yes. Yes, my gatekeeper. Ooh. For so this Halloween for the patrons, we need to to film ourselves playing atmosphere. Oh. Stupid. <laughs> dude. Dude, a game of atmosphere. Where the fourth screen is just yeah, just I the gatekeeper. So. Oof. Love it. It'll look really bad. Oh, maybe maybe we just have a, a camera uh, facing uh, or doing a, a screen capture. Maybe. maybe we could do a screen we'll capture. Maybe. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about games played, <sighs> shall we? We could try, man. I played one game. Is that where we start? Yeah, I think we should start with the there. one. <laughs> the one game. Yeah, I think we t- we talk about the one game we played, and then we could talk about the two series games that Travis played. I guess. I guess if we have to. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, okay. Well, first off, I'm an old world guy now, and. Uh, we played an old world game. It was a last minute, um, last minute. Travis is like, well, "Why don't you guys come?" It's like on a Tuesday. I invited you down on a Friday. I mean, I wouldn't call that last That's minute. Pretty, uh, okay, all right. It was a game. It was a. It was a three day. It was a three day minute. Um. Four day minute. No, we did it on Friday, huh? We didn't do it. It was last minute. It was last minute. It didn't matter. It was last minute game. And so it was two thousand points of vampire accounts from Travis Uh and a thousand points of Bretonia from Ed and a thousand points of Warriors of Chaos for me. Oh man. So it was, you know, it was it was a big match. Two V one. And Ed I hadn't two V one and I hadn't played Old World before. I played and, game, one game. You know, and, and there there was some things that I needed to get clarified at the time. I got yelled at once. Only um, once? But <laughs> yeah. once. Oh, okay. I think once. Uh but overall, it was it was it was a it was a good time. I had a good time. I had for various time. reasons. Ed had for a good time. Reasons. What are the top two reasons, Blake, why you enjoyed your first old world experience? You know what? I really liked that all of my all of my whole army was painted. 
That was kind of cool. You know what? That was cool. I was impressed by that. You you had paint on uh, all your miniatures. Um, And it was old paint, too. You know what? Most of it. Most. You know what? I, I'll be honest with you. It A lot of that paint was done. A lot of that paint was done when I moved into this house. Oh, okay. Oh, that's right. So it's been... It's been a couple, like two years. So uh, all your stuff was on round bases for AOS that you put into um, regiment um, adapters, and it worked really well. It was able to work. I did everything right, and it was able to work. Um, another thing that I enjoyed, I liked learning the rules, and there was changes in the rules. Like I made assumptions about leadership mm-hmm. checks. Uh, there was moments I was like, oh, really? That's a great change. Um, so I was pretty happy with, like, especially when you charge, you get initiative bumps, which is which is That's awesome. Neat. I like that. Especially when mm-hmm. you, especially when you charge with a with a with a fully loaded, a full rack of marauders with flails. Ouch. Yeah, that's you know you're getting plus two initiative, plus two strength, and they have the war band, which yeah, which lets them re-roll their uh, misses. Uh, yeah, it was cool. It was nice to see all that old chaos stuff back. And then I found the best item in the game called the Infernal Puppet. Infernal Puppet. It was it was frustrating. <laughs> Infernal Puppet within 24 inches of uh, Blake's wizard with the Infernal Puppet. Puppet. Whenever I tried to cast a spell, I had to roll three dice and get rid of the uh, the highest. Um, and it, uh, it easily caused three failures that <laughs> probably would have been successes and, and pretty key moments of, of the battle for me. Now, and so, you just accepted my word that that was, that was what the item did. You know, that's what you have to do when you sit down, uh, sit down across the table with someone, you have to just believe that a social contract. they're going to know their army and believe that you know yours. Yeah. That's the way the infernal puppet works. Let me just. But wouldn't say that this. be funny if it was like it had nothing to do? <laughs> so that puppet, uh, yeah, really messed up Travis's game. And it was all and, and all my and guys it were only dumb. worked one round. In one round, it was close enough to work, and it really was like it was. A it was an important round. Happened. Oh, of course. Yeah. You of know, course. I found in the vampire cart, uh, vampire counts. I have a similar item I could take on the corpse carts. Twenty-four inch, Ooh. roll three dice, get rid of the highest. Nice. Don't take that. That's not. That's not a good use of points. Yeah, just like musicians, might, not might a good use of points. Oh, I love that I won combat just because I had a guy with it with a horn several times. <laughs> Multiple times. <laughs> Multiple times. So here's what I'll say about Blake's army. It wasn't big, but they were tough. He they were hard was to tough move. as balls, man. He didn't use it. He didn't lose a unit. I did wipe one unit because it ran and I caught up to it with zombies, which was kind of rare. Oh the marauders. The marauders. The marauders. Yeah. yeah. I almost feel like your marauders you might want to go in second, like have your Wars of Chaos take either charge first or absorb the charge because they're more survivable. And then the Marauders counter charge because then they'll get there. Yeah, you don't want the, especially those Marauders the way they're the way they're built. They're they need a charge. Oh yeah. And you also lost your uh your pos- possessed? What were they called? The spawn. The spawn. Yeah. The spawn. I tied them up yeah. with a well, spirit that was host the- and then uh crashed them with a with a chariot. That's they were tough. Yeah, they, they were. were. And you know what? And basically, I and I, I basically rolled my chariot into your spearman to Just charge to charge blocks for his knights. Yeah. yeah. So I didn't even get to see what my chariots can do on the charge. Um, but yeah, I I had fun. It was nice. It was the the rank and flank the square the square basing is fun. Um, there is shades of the way it used to be like all those magic items existed years mm-hmm. ago um and then yeah it, it was fun also like like plotting with ed like plotting and, and planning with ed on the battlefield mm-hmm. unlikely alliance of bretonian chaos it was tough 
Yeah. I had no one to talk to. I had to make all the decisions <laughs> myself. And some of them were the wrong decisions, like when I built my list. <laughs> well, wow. coming out of it, like there was a lot of discussion about list building. It's true. I, I think, and, you know, I think I, I learned a lot of things of, um, I, I think I was putting too much into just my, my core and I don't, I wasn't putting enough things into like things that hit hard. I, I just had a big survivable core, but, um, it wasn't really hitting back very hard. Well, also, and maybe this is one of your favorite things, Ed, you smoked a zombie dragon in one roll. Yeah. Mm. Like, I think if that zombie dragon had full reign, I've played in other games where the zombie dragons easily like eight, three to four units before it dies. Um, so it's, it, yeah. it, but, but you know, that's, that's why monster hunters in the game is because, uh, if you, uh, I shouldn't have charged him over to that flank. That was a mistake, yeah. but I just wanted to eat something. Hum, num, num, num. <laughs> and you did. Yeah. You did, buddy. Oh, Those bowmen. Yeah. Do you want to talk about using your field trebuchet, Ed? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, dude. I got this field trebuchet. It's a 3D printed one because um, Warhammer never has it in stock, and it's also $80. So when they do have it in stock, I don't want to spend that much money. I think I spent like 15 bucks on it. Anyways. I was like, let me try this field trebuchet. That'd be fun. It'd be fun. Mm-hmm. Try it out. It's a hundred so, points. It 100. could do it. And, and we'd spend a lot of time talking about how potent it could be. You yeah. do a lot of damage. And like, where are we going to place it? Who's our target yeah. priority? We yeah, put a sure. lot of effort into this. Totally. Totally. So then I roll. I get the hit marker. Ooh. I get that hit marker, which means it doesn't have to move. A bunch of people are going to get hit. But then on the other die that they give you, which shows the distance, I got a misfire. And so that means the shot, you roll in the chart and see what happens. And I rolled a one. And that means the whole thing just collapsed. Just exploded. And all those guys that were loading it up and making sure it was the tension was just right. It killed them. They died. Sad. Yeah. It It was it was so awesome that that happened the first time you went to use it. Yeah. And the first time I went to roll my my gaze of the gods, like the chaos gods oh, were like, yeah. blood, I rolled my wizard to be stupid. That's true. That, yeah. But he was pretty Random. stupid. <laughs> he was pretty stupid, dude. Yeah. And he's he had that, that puppet. sock puppet. Yeah. <laughs> basically, yeah, he was basically mankind. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think he was mankind. With Mr. Sacco. And he had the weird, he has that weird, uh, the weird uh, cloth uh, mask, too. Because mm. he's the gray seer from the Albion campaign. That's right. So he has like a, a pay, like a, a piece of cloth over his face. <laughs> cheese cloth. Yeah, cheese cloth. Nice. Well, I mean, it doesn't matter who won or who lost. The game was fun. It's true. I lost. Yeah. And then we played uh we played some root after. Oh, yeah. And then we played some Nintendo also what's it called? Uh Nintendo Champion. World Championship. Yeah. What, what an interesting interesting game. It's actually pretty fun. It was a fun time. Full day full of fun. Me and Blake picked up some Carl's Jr. and headed home. And oh yeah. Awesome. Very tasty. Good time. Good time. But Travis, who is just a machine when it comes to list building and game playing, yeah. he's so deep into this game deep. now. And he's also deep into 40K. Yeah. 40K. I went on some 40K adventures. I uh, uh, coordinated with some strangers on the internet. And Where did, So what site did you find them? Like, how did you locate them? Oh, I mean, it's a little convoluted. Like, at my local Warhammer store, uh, uh, Stacy uh, uh, let me know that there is a WhatsApp group for the people <laughs> who, uh, who frequent the, the store. And my question was, 
uh what's that whatsapp i had no idea what this was it's some sort of weird chat app uh i mean i still dislike it greatly like like the ui not not nice not very it's not like facebook messenger oh it's it's such a Uh, shout out shout out to stacy stacy (laughs) shout out stacy so you got you got on whatsapp yeah and uh it's been i've been lurking there on whatsapp uh i'll say the community is quite a lot younger than than me and um there's there's like uh there's an interesting vibe. There's a vibe. Oh, 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 oh. Oh, he had to sneeze, guys. Oh, that was Kazoon wild. Kazoon Sometimes those just sneak up on you. Um, but I'm professional and I hit mute, and now my camera's broken. Yeah, dude, you probably got a booger. On you, <laughs> so yeah, <dude. laughs> so I'm completely young. out of focus now. Hopefully, hopefully. <laughs> Maybe if I sneeze again, it'll go back. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do some rapid answers. <laughs> Turn on and off the lights or something. I don't uh, know. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so. Um, oh, we're almost there. We're getting we're almost there. there. Just... <laughs> 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 and no, no. Use, get real close with your face. And then gradually, there we did it. We're we back. Did it. Uh, so, so yeah, Shut through this WhatsApp, uh, I've been lurking. They they have a Necromunda campaign that they were doing, but they're like right in the middle of it, and it just seemed a little complicated to try to. I don't know the game well enough to say like, oh yeah. I mean, they said like, oh yeah, just just roll up, you know, fourteen hundred, you know, fourteen hundred points. You you come, you come in here, and I'm all like, and I I started thinking about it. I'm like. I don't even know how to play this game, so, so I, I can't. I can't. That's that, that's not how I'm gonna jump into Necromunda. Um, no. But then I just started asking, like, where where are there places like locally that that they play? Because the Warhammer store has like two tables there, but you can't really like play a full game of Warhammer on, on those tables. They're 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 pretty small. Yeah. Um, and so one of them mentioned that, that there's a place nearby called uh oh gosh i don't remember dragon's den shoot i should probably no, it's, yeah, yeah, it's like it's called Huge like the, shout the, out dragon's den it's called the hungry dragon there we go it's called the hungry dragon hmm. and uh i go on their website and there's a discord i get on the discord and there's a section for for warhammer and then i just like hey do people play warhammer here and few uh, several people like reply reply and one of them is like oh i i could actually play um i could actually play on tuesday night um <laughs> but you know it's this text I, I i didn't know uh i didn't know then what i know now uh <laughs> but uh and so uh i said okay I'm going to do this. Uh, what's the, what's the point value? And they're like thousand points. Apparently they're, they're doing some crusade. Uh, I'm all like, Oh, okay, well I'll bring a thousand points and, and we'll see. And uh, I, I go to the store. It's nice, big area. There's actually like a little cafe, like with, you know, like drinks and stuff. Um, r- lots of big tables, big play area. There's even like a private room in the back. And, and while we were there, there was a group in D and D that went into like the private room to play a, a game of D and D. Um, not a lot of like Warhammer product on the shelves, but it had like a little section with, with several boxes and paint. Um, but, uh, it was a lot more board games and, and card games that was in the, sh- in the shop. Uh, and, uh, I, I see the guy, uh, he's a big, tall white guy with a big, uh, red beard. I felt, you know, instantly like, uh, it just uh, looks like a younger Blake. Um, and I said, Oh, Hey, I got my, my Necrons here. What, what, what'd you bring? And, and he shows me this brown box, just, uh, just filled with, uh, Tyranids, all, all, all gray plastic. I'm like, Oh, okay. Well, uh, all right, then. Yeah, I said yeah. we've all been there. Yeah, too. yeah, we've, we've all we've done, all done, that. done we've, that. You know, it was, it was, I'm still doing still it. Still doing it. That's fine. That's fine. Um, and he says, "Oh, here, here's here's the table we're going to play." And I said, "All right, well, do, do we have any, like mats or anything for for the table?" He's like, "Oh, no, 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 but we got some train over there." And it's it was two boxes of 3D printed bare plastic terrain, and I'm like, "All right, 
we're doing this. So <laughs> it was a combination of like the plane, the playing surface, although was the adequate size. It, it, the table itself was actually 44 inches exactly. And it was also eight feet long. So it's like, well, it was, it was like seven feet long. So we were able to, to, to section off one section and put like our armies just, you know, yeah. ready to deploy. But I mean, the, the table did not look good. I mean, it wasn't even really enough terrain to actually build a table. So I kind of put it together and we're like, oh, okay. Uh, um, uh, we, we drew uh, Leviathan missions and we're like, okay, le- le- let's go. Um, and we started playing and it, it was fine, but he brought this like at a thousand points. It was like a big bug Tyranid list. And yeah. mine was a pretty basic, like kind of infantry, uh, <laughs> a uh, thousand points necron so it wasn't a lot to handle like these these really high toughness high wound models um i i was able to take out one of them um and then since the sight lines on the table were wide open he was able to just kind of like pelt me from across the table and eventually broke me down uh, yeah that's the thing like the big bugs are also like brutal shooters. Yeah, yeah. I'll, it's not that they're. It's not that they're just big and tough. They also will just slam you at distance. I think. I mean, I think the the Tyranid Big Bud list looks pretty pretty fun to play. I mean, it, it, it's pretty versatile. Um, I, it, it was scary. It was, it was hard to deal with. Um, and you know, I started getting maybe a little bit sour. I think you I, you guys talked to me at the end of that night, and uh, I was pretty sour <laughs> over the game. <laughs> Um, so what I'm going to play right now is an oh. audio. <laughs> no, 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 I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Oh, I was upset. Sour. Uh, I, I've, yeah, I've come from were. like like a, a lot of games in a row. I've been losing a lot, and it's just like and I it's like I lost to someone. Uh, like his bugs weren't even like glued to their bases. He would he would he would like move the bases and then place the the big Tyranid model back on the base. So it's yeah. it felt insulting. <laughs> well, and I think I think it brought up a good conversation that you were having with Ed and Josh on Xbox, and it's like it's a it's a culture thing. Mm-hmm. It's not not saying that this person lacks the culture. But we all played 40K, all plastic, on a, a, a table that wasn't good. Yeah. No, Matt, we've all been there. We played on the carpet before. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've played on the floor of these miniature games before. But you have developed your hobby into something much bigger than just playing a game. Yeah, and you know what? It also, it was weird. When I came up in the 90s, there was this culture that, like, when you're at home, it's okay to play with, like, you know, stuff that you weren't weren't painted. But when you brought something to play in store, and I think it's because our main store was this place called Waterloo that was originally a Napoleonic store. And so, mm, like, this, you didn't bring unpainted models into this store. To, to play yeah. um and it had a beautiful like so much terrain um like it just yeah. it was this back room just filled with pipe smoke and just like all the terrain you could ever imagine and that it was it was fabulous to play there but it's like but we didn't bring our army in there to play in the store until it was ready and and yeah. uh, that's that's the culture that i grew up in and then when like warhammer stores started popping up like at all the malls i i started playing in those a lot and they wouldn't allow you to bring in um unless it was three color minimum and it had a base on it um basing now that's more of a marketing thing because when they when 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 randos come by Mm -hmm. yeah yeah it'll look weird if it's gray plastic but you you want to present the product in the most appealing way which I see why GW. Would yeah, do but that. I'm just saying that that's that's what I came up. So so like like yeah that that was in in the 90s was you know basically this store that um, I think because of the Napoleonic history there that you yeah. brought in painting stuff and then um, like uh, in the 2000s whenever I played it was it was like an uh, official like you know Games Workshop store and then eventually um, I, I started playing at a short a store that's actually here in Temecula. 
but it's not here anymore. But it had a really big tournament scene. And everyone who plays tournaments had fully painted armies because that was required to play in the tournament. Where you get you got your soft scores. Yeah. So you got so your soft it's points. it's it's like that's just that's just the history I've had with with the game. It's like you know, at home you you play with the stuff before it's ready, but when you brought it into the store, it was ready. But and, and I'm not saying that's the correct way. I'm just saying that's that's how I was brought up, and that's how my mind works. So. I had a, I had a bad experience. I, I didn't yeah. love it. Like uh, I was pretty angry, a little salty that 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 night. But did I give up? No, no you didn't. Do you know mm-hmm. what? Because I said mm-hmm. you were, I said you were a degenerate. Yeah. I that you're a degenerate. Warhammer I got person. on the forums and I thanked the guy for a great game. Made a joke about how like it's too bad that uh, your Tyranids didn't get any biomass. Because all they ate was mouthfuls of metal. Uh, and, uh, you know, he said, well, they were a little iron deficient, you know. So we had a little fun back and back. And so sometimes, around, uh, like, the, the week goes by and the weekend, uh, the, this, this uh, same player puts out, hey, I'm available to play on Tuesday again. And I say to myself, yeah, <laughs> I'm going to do this again. But you know what? Yeah, dude. I'm going to do this on my terms. I accept his challenge. I, 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 he was available early, which was great. We started a game at two o'clock in the afternoon, which was fantastic for me. I brought a table war mat and I brought a crate of fully painted terrain. Maybe not the best painted terrain, but it looks pretty good on the table. I got there a little early. I had it all set up. There were there were fire lanes, but there was tons of line of sight blocking terrains. There's ruins that you can't shoot through. You got all set up, and uh, I also tweaked my list and brought uh, a lot of heavy heavier hitters. One of which was uh, Nightbringer Satan, uh, which uh, as soon as he saw that, he was like, "Oh no!" <laughs> well, like, yeah, I came I came to play today, and uh, we had. For me, what was just a much more enjoyable game, um, I think, um, and it's not just because the terrain was painted, but it helped. But also, there's just enough terrain so that the game could like be played properly. Um, it, it, we weren't just, you know, it just the, the game went back and forth uh, um, all, a lot. I actually like failed. I I, I was using the hypercore oh. legion and. I had set up like three nine inch charges and they all failed. I'm all like, and I, and I just, I assumed that one of them would get through because they were all charging the same target, you know? <laughs> so it's like, I have all three of these people. Actually, do you know what? Two of them were nine inch. One of them was a four inch charge. So I'm yeah. like, one of these has to get in to stop this guy from getting the, the objective. And it was a, it was one of the, missions i'd never done before the servo skull mission and i kind of misunderstood at the beginning you're actually just moving the servo skulls across and then at the end of the turn you score if you control a servo skull and depending on how close it is to the opponent's um uh deployment zone and so i i I don't know if I would have, you know, been able to move them up for us, but like he scored really huge uh, uh, turn two, and I didn't. But then it was pretty even every turn after that. Uh, but it, much more back and forth. I think I killed three of of the like six big uh, Tyranid bugs that were on the table, um, but he killed a lot of my stuff at the end of the ge- end of the game. It was basically my Satan was on the table and a and a group of immortals and i was able to position them um using hypercourt legion to push uh two of the objectives forward and scored 30 points in the in the last turn which unfortunately didn't get me the win but i only lost by five points so it it was it was it was a much closer game and enjoyable and it's like i you know i felt good about it like okay i had to bring more stuff but it really wasn't that much more effort to to bring like an extra crate of terrain and and a mat and uh maybe if i come a few more times it'll inspire some people you know at the end of the game he's all like yeah i probably really should uh, glue my tyranids down to my base so already 
We're making progress here. The seed's been planted, dude. You know? The seed has been planted. Yeah. yeah I remember having that discussion and saying, you know, like, you're going to have to. I know you didn't want to. But you're gonna you're gonna have to be that guy. Yeah, the, I wanted like it would have been nice, you know, to just step into an established community and just kind of like slide in there. And but you know, maybe I'm gonna have to create something on my own, and you know, it'll be worth it. If you build it, they will come. That's right. Yeah, I and that's what we that's how, that's our prime forty k days were. Luckily, we had a locker that we could store all the terrain in. Oh, that's interesting. So, so it, uh, at battle, but at battlegrounds, it was your terrain that you're bringing into the store too. A lot of it, oh, yeah. Okay. And different people would do it. Yeah, it, yeah, and the mats and, but we had a pretty good group back then. Yeah. Oh yeah, you had best. a vicious group, and I, and I don't know, like, what was our painting culture there? I mean, I think people would would paint. It wouldn't just be completely gray plastic. Yeah. But, um, and I want to make sure, like, I'm not, I I don't want to come across like, like a, like a slob. I, I just, I just want there to be some effort in putting some paint on on the models, you know? Yeah, I get you. That's it. But also, I would say, though, that Battlegrounds was also, and I hadn't thought about it till you said it. There was, there was a tournament, there was a tournament edge to Battlegrounds. And, you have to have your armies painted in a tournament. That's one of the benefits, I think, of a store that has a tournament culture is because tournaments require p- painting. And so it does kind of drive the the, the painting uh, side yeah. of it. Yeah, I hadn't thought about it that way. Well, oh, yeah. I knew you'd go back. I was happy that you I did. I, you know what? I'm glad I did too because, you know, I think it was just a much better – Experience now. Now, now there's a there's an arc to my to my story there. Um, I'm pretty busy next week, so I don't think I'm gonna be able to line something up. But I'm gonna try to grab some some other. There, there's someone on there who's actually talking that that they are painting their blood angels, and they're not quite ready yet. Um, so I'm excited to to get that opponent on, on the table. There's some potential yeah. there. It's. It's blue. <laughs> yeah, it's me that was that. You show up. <laughs> and just trolling it's like, you. like, oh, man, you got me. <laughs> you got you. Speaking of painted blood angels, let's talk real quick about our hobby commitments. Do you, do you remember making hobby commitments? I do. Yeah, I did. <laughs> what was it, Blake? I said I'd paint four Marauders. Oh, okay. I didn't. Oh. I got some. Uh, I got some dry brushing on their, on their, um, their prime black. I got some dry brushing on the metals. I got a bit of a flesh tone going, and I kind of left it there. Okay. Um, but did you notice in my Marauder unit? Did you notice some dudes were just dry brush with metal and had some skin on them? You know, it didn't really, really stick out that because they were towards the oh, back. Okay. So, now, smart. did you see? I had the bloodbound guys in there. Yeah, yeah. I had, I, and they were they were painted very different though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, in a group like that, it's okay. Yeah, I kind of spaced yeah. them out a little bit, but yeah. So I had five marauders in there that were just dry brushed metal and, and had some some flesh on them. Nice. So in a way, I kind of did. If you didn't catch it, then maybe. <laughs> are they finished? No, but are they painted? I mean, technically, yes, they are. Three colors. Three, there's three colors. Flesh, black, and metal. Yeah, there, there you go. go. That's all you need. Three prong attack. Did you have uh, Travis? Yeah, I believe I committed to finishing my immortal squad, and I did. And uh, I'm actually yeah, really did. happy how they turned out. Uh, pictures I, I never do it justice, but uh, the uh, the glow on their weapons and and the little cable that comes out actually turned out pretty good on them. I'm happy. Nice. I'm excited. You guys did a good job. What about you, Ed? Do you remember your hobby commitment? I do remember my hobby commitment and what it was. Oh boy, how am I going to do this? 
what it was is um, I had a uh, I was trying to do these these Tragos, these trolls for Age of Sigmar, and I was trying to do three for Cheyenne, and I didn't quite do it, so I doubled down and said I was going to do six. So that's more than three. I'm going to show you guys. I know it's more than Ooh. three. So I figured I'm going to show you guys right now what I actually did. And I finished the six. So here they are. Um, all painted, you know, for Cheyenne. And you can also see the goblins I was working on for the icy challenge in the back. And uh, so I got those six done along with the goblins. And then um, that's a closer look at them in progress. I actually painted the bird on this guy's head, um, which was, there's a nest on this yeah. guy's head with an egg and a bird on it, which is pretty The purple pretty turned out good. Actually, the purple with the flesh tones on the belly. Good. It's uh, that yeah. works nicely together. Yeah. And you use some oil wash too, yeah. right? Yeah. I use a oil, purple oil wash. So, I mean, I did it. Mission completed. And, uh, Shine was pretty happy about it. So I have two more models left to paint. So I think, um, and also for Carl's challenge, for the IC challenge, they're doing a vehicle this month. So I have to try to figure out how I'm going to do the vehicle and the two, uh, two of the bigger Tragos. They're like the captains Ooh. or whatever. I don't know what they're called. That's a lot. You know what? But you could do it. We all, we all succeeded. We all did. Yeah. I'm going to claim a win Big for w. me. I'm going to claim a podcast win for all of us. <laughs> yep. Podcast w. Win. Good job, everybody. Victory. Make an eye. Make an eye. Um, so what, like what you do make you have? And, uh, okay. Um, yeah. I'll make the, the end. I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm on the left. No, you're in the matter. middle for me. <laughs> so uh yeah i think i i my my plan is to start uh maybe finish one of the big guys between the yeah. ne- now and the next recording and get the vehicle done for carl's big <laughs> order tall order but i'm gonna try for it I, I i don't know i am like halfway done with a block of 40 zombies for old world and i am i don't so i'm gonna get them all base coated washed and based so that they look tabletop ready but probably am not going to get all the details done because the that the detail work on them is probably going to take me a while. But I'll I'll, pro, I'll try to get the front line like detailed done. You know what I mean? Like like so the front rank go. will have details fully done. Then everything else will be base coated, washed, and everything flocked so so that it looks good on the table. Because in September first the. the this this is going to be a, I'll report on this, but I'm just going to tease it. I'm going up to the mighty Tom's house in uh, in Napa Valley, and we're going to do a three game narrative old world arc of vampire counts versus goblins, and I'm very excited wow. about it. Man. I'm going to need those zombies. I really wish I could be Tom's friend. Yeah. You should try it one day. It's pretty fun. I've tried. He's, I've tried. <laughs> He's a pretty friendly okay. guy. You just well, gotta kind of reach out, you know. I don't. I don't believe you. I've like tried for one second. For one second, because I've tried and I've succeeded. Oh, it's probably because you never go to Geek End anymore. Uh, yeah. That's what it is, dude. When's now, the last time there was a Geek End? Last November. <laughs> yeah, last November, dude. <laughs> oh, so when I was recovering from my surgery and I had no more sick days, maybe I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly that what it was. was. No. Yeah, I, I burned all my I burned all my sick days for a surgery, and I'm sorry, I love you guys, but gotta get surgery on the weekend, dude. Bucks. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, that's it. What's Blake doing? What's he committed to? I I can't commit. Oh, wait, that's the truth. I don't know. <laughs> I can't commit. I mean, I will continue. I don't. I don't. I don't know. 
Right now we're starting, you know, we're work's starting to get busy. School's starting. I mean, you know what I'm going to commit to? I'm going to commit to cleaning up my hobby space. Love it. Reset the mechanism. Ed's old kitchen table. Ed's old kitchen table is my kitchen oh, table. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Now, that whole thing, I'll, sh- I'll shoot you guys a picture. I wish I, I wish I had this ready. I'll shoot you guys a picture of what it looks like right now after the I show. Think, I think you need for this hobby progress, I mean, for this challenge. A before and after? <laughs> this isn't the hobby progress. Yeah, I think you need to do a before and after so we can see the progress, buddy. You know, that's a great yeah. idea. So I'm going to commit to getting my hobby table, um, you know, Cleaned just tidied up. up and like, cool. you know. Yeah. You got to do that sometimes. I ordered a paint rack uh, or a paint. It's not a paint rack, a paint Lazy Susan. Ooh. To try to clean my 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 space is a little messy right now. I'm, I'm not happy with it. Well, I got just stacks and stacks of stuff on stacks and stuff. Stacks and stacks. Yeah, stacks. And you know stacks. that that is a hobby commitment. Oh yeah, it's an important it part is, of the right. hobby. The maintenance thing, you know. I think I think I found our cheat code here. I got too much really stuff is. that I want to do right now, but you know, I got to focus on one project and just keep keep doing that. Yeah, for me right now it's zombies. Right, Slow and steady wins, wins the race, boys. I think you're right, Travis. Slow and steady wins the race. So I don't. Did Carl ever get back to you about his reading? Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, he said for you guys what anything. You <laughs> oh man, that's Carl really yeah. said that. Okay, sweet. But we're out of time. Um, I know that would have to be next I know. time. It's going to have to be next time we can ask Blake the Carl questions. The five and then questions? Blake can finally listen to the show that we were on because he hasn't listened so to that, it. So that's great. I've been so intent- tune in next next time in, in 15 days' time. We're, we are going to ask Blake the questions that Ed and myself got asked on the Warrior Large. on Warrior, Warrior Large. Warrior, right. Warrior We were pretty large, large on that <laughs> Warrior Lodge. <laughs> yes, we're, we're, we're pretty large. Probably Warrior, the largest people Warrior who've ever Lodge. been on the Warrior Warrior Lodge, <laughs> to tell you the truth. Until I show up. <laughs> well, until you show up. You know what I like about uh-huh. this? The way this I my I'm so much bigger and taller in our screens, yeah. which is accurate. accurate. Yeah. Like this is like true yeah. scale uh, video screen. True scale space marines. Warrior. You've been through the Arcanum Primaris. I don't remember what it was called. I crossed the, the Rubicon, Rubicon Primaris, Primaris baby. <laughs> Amen. Uh, the die is cast, said Caesar, as he crossed the Rubicon. Uh, where he, when he crossed the Rubicon, he became a criminal and an enemy of the Senate of the Roman Republic. Did you know that? I'm so sorry. I referenced yeah. something that was Roman. I didn't know I did. Um, yeah, that, that's on me. How often do you guys think about the Roman Empire? Almost never. Almost I mean, you know what? I think about the Caesar haircut everyone had in the in the the nine late nineties, early two thousands, mm-hmm. more than I think of the Roman, the Clooney, the Clooney. You guys ever think about uh, aqueducts? No. Do you know? What? I think I probably think about the Greeks way more. Than the Roman Empire because of Bill and Ted. Obvious reasons. There's probably not like a day that goes by that I don't quote like Bill and Ted at least once. Speaking of aqueducts, I'm going to the aqueduct tomorrow. You're going to the aqueduct tomorrow? I'm going to the aqueduct tomorrow. Did you know that some of some of the oldest living and workable aqueducts today? Were built by the Romans. Yeah, I knew that. Yeah, the the one right by my house I'm going to tomorrow was built by the Romans. No, yeah, Roman was Castillo was, was the uh, yeah, Roman, yeah, Roman 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 Castillo. No, that that was built by the government of California. Oh, my mistake. Are you going to the aqueduct tomorrow? Yeah, dude. I'm what are you doing? Fishing? Are we in life after? Yeah, already? I'm gonna do some fishing. No, we're oh, not. Okay, I'm going fishing. Oh, fishing. Oh, we're doing life after. Yeah. Oh, yeah. We we do have to transition to life after. We're doing it. All right. We're going fishing. 
What so do you guys you want to hear? Catch? You want to hear about this guy that I met in Burbank? I kind of want to hear about who you fishing. Let's do it. Alexa, pardon. <laughs> so, are you taking time off work? No, I'm gonna go uh, in the evening when it's a lot cooler. Probably around oh, tomorrow's seven. Friday. You want to go fishing? N- probably not. Yeah, I didn't think you would. That's not a good idea. I hear the aqueduct can be dangerous. We're not going into the aqueduct. Well, that's how I fish. <laughs> yeah, I put on my waders yeah. and I go in. Okay, uh, cool. Yeah, tomorrow's Friday. Yeah, tomorrow's Friday, dude. Your kids back yet at school? Nope. Monday. Monday. My kids go back to school on Wednesday. We're doing it, man. It's Monday. in. It's time. Monday's going to be nuts. We're doing it. It's always weird to me that All they right. don't start school on a Monday. They don't? Yeah, that's My weird. district doesn't, man. Your district is weird, man. So weird. Yeah. Dis- so, Ed, now that we're in life yeah, after, and I have my life after goggles on, uh, you recently brokered a deal for me to acquire some old world vampire count models. Life after the conversation, our passion remains. 